Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we are seeing the euro a bit lower here, as well as the cable. Uh, we can go on and take a quick look at those. And I'm looking at the futures as opposed to the cash. Uh, but we do have the euro in 2001 and the cash is trading 1991 so the uh, 6e is trading a 10 10 tick premium to the cash but you can see here uh once we had that dip yesterday we've actually challenged uh, and i was just looking and i just shared it at the time right there we had just moved to the top of the opening range you know because opening range we have here in european trading and we just moved in the US session right at the top. And I thought, this is a decent area for short. I posted a chart and all of a sudden, whoop. Uh, that's when it uh, came out about Janet Yellen potentially saying, or saying potentially we could see, have to get higher rates. And uh, to keep the economy from overheating, we came back a little bit and we just kind of dithered in there, I guess into the mid. Oh, I guess it looks like about 2035, which had been about 2025 of the cash. We took a dip and then we spent uh, Asia just kind of working higher. And you can see here, we just slid slid a decent amount, uh, I guess about 30, 35 pips or in this case ticks down here. And we take a look at cable. Uh, same thing here with cable. Uh, we're actually much higher, took a little bit of slide now. We just got German services PM on. That came in at 49.9. They were expecting 50, so just a tad bit weaker. Uh, Eurozone uh, services came in at 50.5. They're looking for 50.3. Uh, French uh, composite PMI came in at 51.6. They're expecting 51.7. All these pretty much came in line. Italian, 47.3, always the weaker one. They're expecting 49.8. Uh, and then, of course, Spanish services PMI was 54.6, uh, just a hair under the expected 55. Now, they did get Spanish unemployment. That came in at minus 39,000, so good little dip there. Uh, good little dip in, uh, in the sense as a you know, stretch, uh, not good in the sense of a good thing. Uh, we do have, um, bear with me, at the top of the hour, we will get... Uh, Eurozone PPI, um, that'll be at the top of the hour, and we do get a German uh, five-year bubble auction. Um, that'll be uh, in another hour and a half, essentially. Coming into the States, uh, we do have non-farm payroll on Monday, so we get our ADP at uh, 815 Eastern. They're expecting 800,000. Um, That'll be a little bit of a market over there. And uh, let's see, Chicago Fed Evans will be speaking. I said New York business conditions will be at 945 Eastern. Um, and uh, non-manufacturing business activity will be at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we did go and see a smart rebound here in S&P, as you can see here also. Uh, boy, we take a dip down here, down here to the 4120, but we started you know, moving higher, moving higher. And uh, boy, we made a pretty good run before the close to get up here to the, um, uh, I thought we'd make it up to about 4156. We put made this quick push up to 4160 uh, and actually 62, and which was the opening range low and then we dip back and uh, quietly in Asia we just started working a little bit higher a little bit higher 4167 looked pretty good um, but we made a push up to this 41 just a hair over 73 which is a good area there we languished there we did back to about what 4163 64 and we made back another push up of these highs and if you take a look at NASDAQ it's been along the same lines too made up to about 13,580. I was looking for us to make a move up into this range, and we certainly did. We actually did that uh, going towards the close. We pushed back again, and we've just kind of languished here. 
Uh, 13,600, I believe, is the 38%. So that'll be interesting. That's actually, I believe, what we have our bias chart resistance for today. Um, take a look at gold. Gold really took a shock on that on that news. You see that we kind of whimpered back a little bit. And here we are dipping back again. I think we have buys chart support around 68, if I remember correct, correctly. And crude oil, boy, that was a pretty good move. Look at that. And we're still making a run higher here. This is a bit of a surprise. I think we have resistance today around 66.80, if I remember correctly. With that being said, we're going to make a run. Um, and uh, Paul says, good morning, morning, Paul. Uh, morning, Paul. Uh, glad to have you here in the um, uh, European Crossover webinar. If you have any questions or whatever, don't hesitate to go and post those in. I know um, Amira will always post uh, for me to take a look at Platinum and Palladium. We usually get to that a little bit later on. I guess those are the two markets he uh, delves in, apparently. And uh, but we're going to get to uh, the rest of the others, obviously, with Bitcoin too. Bitcoin also took a little bit of a drop from that area, and we're ba basically been sitting in this little support area, kind of pushed up a little bit higher. But it'll be interesting to see where we go. Um, they may want to keep this in check, I guess, around here until maybe we get past, past this ADP. Um, but we shall see. Um, one moment. So let's get started and move into the euro dollar. Of course, when we're doing the analysis, we're looking at the cash. Now, the euro after posting a minor rebound on Monday, then post a bearish, you can see this, a bearish engulfing bar on Tuesday. Uh, and I put here support for Tuesday, didn't correct that. Support for Wednesday will be 1978 with resistance at 2061. Thought it might try and push a little bit higher. That was not to come to fruition. So uh, we've got 2060, um, 1978 and 2061. Obviously, overall, still remains bear, a bullish. I can't deny that when you look at the daily. We're going to have to get some moves down here to get into a neutral mode. Um, let's go on and move in now to the cable. The cable on Monday posted a bullish cloud cover. You can see that right here only to close a bit lower on Tuesday. You can see here um, with a hammer, could mean say it might even be like a hanging man if we were much higher, but um, it does indicate here uh, resistance on Wednesday will be 39.41. Looks like we ran out of gas here at 39.17. 39.41 with support at 39.13. Uh, that cannot be right here. It means to be 3813. It wouldn't make any sense if it was just sort of the lower. So it should be 3813. So 3941 and 3813. And moving on to the Aussie dollar. This one has been all over the place. Look at that. This is unbelievable. Look at that. Down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
Um, the up and down affair of Aussie continues. Tuesday was the down day. The pair hit some stops just above 77.68. Support on Wednesday will be 76.59 with resistance at 77.61. So we'll kind of dip in, but in rather tight range though, nonetheless. So once again, it's going to be on the downside, 76.59. And on the upside, 77.61, which would be just a little bit above this key level. With that, we'll go and move into the dollar yen. So the dollar yen closed slightly positive in a tight range on Tuesday. Resistance on Wednesday will be 973 with support at 888. Wow, we are trading in a super tight range right now. We're not going anywhere. Uh, you would look for this 957, but I thought, well, they might be able to goose the stops and push a little bit higher, but they are tight as a drum today. Uh, and I gave it a little bit of room on the upside and the downside. Uh, we've been kind of stretching these ranges a little bit, and they're just trading super quiet today. So nonetheless, $9.73 was supported $8.88. Boy, that is a stretch on both sides from where we're at right now. Moving on to the cash dollar index. So the dollar index closed higher on Tuesday uh, per a brief scare about interest rates. Obviously, that's when Janet Yellen said that uh, they may have to raise interest rates to cool down the heating economy. Uh, of course, she's not with the Fed anymore, but the market still reacted. Resistance for the uh, for the balance of the week will be ninety one sixty seven, with support at ninety ninety eight. And we'll push a little bit higher today. Obviously, still remains bearish, quite bearish. And with that, we're going to move into Bitcoin. And here's Bitcoin on the daily. Bitcoin uh, faded on Tuesday with the interest rate scare. The coin found support at 53,415, which you can see that comes in right there, that key level, 53,415. Resistance for Wednesday will be 55,500. We're trying to push a little bit higher. Uh, with support at 52,770. And right now, is 55,325. We're not too far away from today's bias chart resistance. 55,500. And with that, we're going to move into the S&Ps. Here's a daily. 
and take a look at the 2H, the 2 hour. So the S&P broke solidly through the pivot of 41.64, that pivot should be 41.67, through the pivot of 41.67, falling as low as 41.20. The index rebounded to 41.62 before closing at 41.56. Resistance on Wednesday will be 41.67, pivot with a stretch to 41.73. So we've got the stretch of 41.73, but it certainly looks like it wants to get beyond that. We shall see. So 41.73. And support will be 41.44 followed by 41.38. So you can see where they're at right now. Let's see. I'll just go with that nonetheless. And make sure I'm going to go with this 41. So we're still pulled up in here. Go 41.48. And below that is 4144. Now let's go into the NASDAQ. We're looking right now with the two hour. So the NASDAQ broke 13,700. You can see right here, 13,715. Uh, broke 13,700 with gusto, pushing close to the daily level of 13,557 before posting a modest rebound back to 13,545. Currently at 13,590. So actually, we're on our highs right now. Uh, resistance for Wednesday will be 13,601 with support at 13,461. So resistance is going to be 13,601. And support is going to be 13,461. And if you take a look at Fib. Um, the fib comes at thirteen six forty three, thirteen six forty three. So we'll mark that There we go. So we are on our highs there. Well, we're just about right there on our highs, pushing here. Here we are on a 30 minute. Uh, so I've got 13601. Got this 13597 here. 13601 as buys chart resistance, but we do have uh, 643 be the 38%. And with that, we'll go and move into the gold market.
And boy, did gold get whacked pretty good. Remember yesterday we had resistance at 1803, and it looked like we were on our way to get to 1803. Uh, the market got up as high as, uh, it actually made new highs for the move. Got up as high as 1799.5. Thought we were going to get to 1803. A lot of people are looking for a much bigger move in gold. And we got whacked by Janet Yellen. So gold fell on Tuesday with a thud with the interest rate scare falling from near 1800 to 1768 before posting a mod modest bounce. Resistance on Wednesday will be 1788 with support at 1764. So and moving on now to crude. Holy smokes, crude's on its highs. Look at that thing go. Sheesh. Root continues its ascent on Tuesday, challenging 66 even. Resistance on Wednesday will be 6680. We're almost there. We support at 6515. So 6515. Resistance is 6680. And how do we come up with 6680? Uh, we looked over here. And I went with, you see right here, this little gap? What was that opening? There's 6680. Looks like 6679. That might be 81 cents. Anyway, there we go. Then we came up with the 66. She says it's 6681. And that's how we came up with 6680, or in this case, 81. I'm looking at a two hour chart. Okay, and here's the bias chart. We'll take a look at a couple other things for right now. Let's take a look at the VIX. One of the things we've been talking about, people are looking for the VIX to maybe take off. It has. Um, Boy, we jumped up. Look, we jumped up all the way to almost 22 when we came back. Uh, people are trying to determine or not determine, but want to see if we can get a sustained move above 20. Certainly, yesterday shook things about. But we, we came right back in, though. We traded 1863. Look at NASDAQ. It's trading on its, almost at its highs at 13.587. Uh, Spoos are trading 41.72 and a quarter. We do have, as I mentioned, uh, ADP, um, so that may keep this thing on the bid. You can see we did see it sustain a pretty good fallback. And Apple, um, look at Microsoft. I'm um, just so like this evening star up in here, and then look, it's been downhill since then. Amazon looks terrible. 
Wow, I mean, this one really got whacked pretty good. It was even holding up okay around at 34.79. I think support was 73. And now look, we just took it even uh, much deeper. Uh, pair back. Um, wow, I cannot look at Dollar Cad. Unbelievable. That thing cannot stop from falling. Holy smokes. And let's see, let's take a look here. Here's the energy stocks. There's XLE. Doing pretty well. And the only reason I gave it a look is because crew's like on fire. Um, um, let's take a look at the 10 year. We actually took a dip yesterday and stocks got spooked. Even though you would have thought that bonds would have sold off with Jan Yellen saying potential raising rates, they bought them when they saw these, these uh, indexes go lower. Here's the 10 year futures. Which are a little bit quiet today. And moving back to your dollar. Well, we're trading on our lows right now. We do have bias chart support at 1978. Take a look here on a uh, two-hour chart. Looking rather sickly. As I mentioned, supports at 1978. We've actually gone as low as, looks like 1985. And lastly, one last look at cable. Well, so this is a little bit of a hanging man here on the two hour chart. And here we are pressing back lower. And with that, that I will call it a day and I'll get the buy chart posted and we'll see you in the chat room. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover webinar.